Hi guys. Well, I wanted to show you what I got the other day. I meant to do this video sooner, but still been kind of under the weather, sore throat and stuff, and then makes it kind of hard to talk. I've been trying to lose my voice, so which is probably not a bad thing. Anyway, this is a, a 1933 airline. Um, uh, 62103 or 62105. They use both the same chassis, but I believe this is the 105. Uh, if I go by pictures, because the 103 looks very similar, and of course they use both. Both use the same exact chassis, but the 103 has a bar that goes right here. Uh, you know, a piece like this going across. And I think the 105 evidently did not have that. But otherwise, um, uh, basically the same radio. Uh, it's not in too bad a shape. It needs some cleaning. Uh, the top's a little dark and dirty. I've been kind of just kind of scrubbing a little bit. Uh, there's some finish loss. Uh, otherwise not in too bad a shape. The side here, these dark spots, I think is more or less dirt. I haven't actually cleaned it yet. Uh, this side's not too awfully bad. But the uh, grill cloth, I'm pretty sure, is definitely a replacement. Uh, and they didn't do a really got it real tight in there it's kind of loose there's little wrinkles in it and of course naturally you can push on it so uh, I'll probably just go ahead and stick with it but get it glued down a little better the two sides here this is full finish here and here uh, in fact it's exactly the same pattern there's a little spot right here it's supposed to be like a little knot I don't know if I can get into that but if we come over it's the same place <laughs> along with a lot of the other patterning uh, there's some like these little lines here going up we come over same lines so it, it's just a just a full finish just this little spot and here the rest of the cabinet is just uh, a mahogany uh, there's some wear here from the knobs I believe these two bottom knobs are pretty darn close if not exactly what's supposed to be on it but this one isn't uh, so right now I'll just keep it uh, you don't see no dial pointer pointer because it actually lights up it's behind and then it has a piece of plastic that has a slit in it, although the plastic is pretty well deteriorated and broken up. Most of it's missing. But then the light shines through the slit and then shines through here. Um, she's also setting down. Uh, so uh, the rubber supports were virtually gone. There was only one left in it and it was flattened out completely. Uh, so, let me, uh, pause this a minute, and then we'll rotate it around so you can see the back. Okay. Now, there's, uh, the IF strip in the front end coming down through here. And, and then we've got a rectifier, audio output tube, detector, and first audio here. Two electrolytic cans, power transformer, and speaker, which is not too bad a shape. It had one hole in it and someone has patched it. Um, I don't know if I can... A uh, part of the tag is missing, but it does show where the tubes go still. Uh, I've already tested all the tubes and they test good. Now, one thing I want to point out on here is, okay, you got it's got a tuned RF, so we've got a coil for it, um, the, which also means that the tuning condenser is three-section. 
So this is our RF up front here. And then we've got our mixer, local oscillator, tube. Uh, or no, I get, think it's... Yeah. And then we go into our first IF tube. And then we go in our uh, uh, second detector or detector tube. And then our first audio tube. And then output and of course rectifier. The IF cans are right here. This one, I've already took the IF out because I want to show it to you and show you something about these. This has a 175 kilocycle IF. Non adjustable. It's factory set. It cannot be aligned. There's no adjustments to it. That's why there's no real openings in the cans. Only thing that's up here is just to allow. They use all the same cans, so is allow the uh, grid caps to go through. Now I've already pulled the knobs off. I'm going to pull this plug out, take the speaker loose. Uh, there was a plate in the bottom. I already took it loose. It's a ground plate. It fits uh, right here. I already took it loose. So I'll take the speaker loose. Uh, the bolts are out of it. And I'll remove the chassis and show you underneath side. So I'll pause this and get that done. Okay, here we are. Now, <clears throat> there's some stuff took and loose because I pulled that IF out. It hooked into here and and stuff. But uh, and I'll show it to you here in a minute. But uh, candom resistor. This resistor was crossed here because this section here is open. It's a wrong size too. Uh, they put this capacitor in. This is a replacement. It's in the wrong place. The reason this is open is I got B plus, which obviously comes from here. This is uh, one of the can uh, electrolytics, and obviously it has kind of leaked <laughs> a little bit. Uh, spilled its guts pretty good. But anyway, B plus comes up here and feeds through this resistor to feed the screens so they come up and go up this way and hook to here and then run on over hooked here and here well you know when you got okay you got voltage going to your screen you need a bypass cap or decoupling cap to keep signal off of it getting back in your b plus that's what this cap is this cap looks pretty bad. In fact, what's left of the outer casing cardboard is right there. It's kind of a little bit tempered up. <laughs> this one's shorted and then burnt up. In the process of doing so, then it took out this section of the, the cap. Uh, the can ohm. So then they put this resistor in here to take care of that. But this cap is the actual replacement for this one. But it's not going where it's supposed to go. They, they should have put it here and also pulled this one completely out. But they didn't. So anyway, now the other little thing of interest is this capacitor here. It's not connected up. It went bad a long time ago. In fact, the replacement's right here. This capacitor is not on the schematic. But this 81003 is an airline part number. This is a factory capacitor. It's a change. But the service information does talk about it. Come on, focus. Um, and I'll show that to you in a little bit. But it used to be a wire that probably ran up into here, uh, over to here. And when that evidently went open on them or it went leaky or whatever problems it caused, then they just, they took that wire out and then hooked the, uh, uh, new cap here. It's a, uh, bypass cap for the first audio tube for the cathode circuit. Uh, as far as the rest of it goes, power cord here, 
uh, it had a newer cord put on it I took it off because it was really badly put on to here um, but before I did that I went ahead and pulled the rectifier tube out and did some checking and checked the power supply or transformer and it seemed to be okay anyway now I can get back up and I'll show you the schematic here and so it's it's just a uh, standard radio AM and that's it that's all there is to it we're running uh, 6D6 two 6D6's this is your RF amplifier and IF a 6C6 for the detector oscillator and or mixer oscillator uh, 37 with the grid and plate uh, tied together to act as a diode it's a detector uh, and then another 37 first audio and then a 42 output and of course an 80 rectifier tube here's this can ohm right here and that capacitor that burned up is right here when it's shorted out it, it goes to ground feeds down to here comes down and right down here and then this is the part of can ohm that opened up because the capacitor shorted and then that comes right back directly to the power supply so now that cap I was showing you says it's not on the schematic is going from this point here with the cathode on the first 37 to ground there's no cap there but if we bring down this this is why you should always read and understand everything in your service information and it states here in later models, a condenser has been added, which is connected from the first audio cathode to ground. This condenser is not shown in the circuit diagram, figure 1. Right here. An 8 microfarad, 25 volt electrolytic condenser is used, which is what that is. The reason for this change is to avoid hum caused by some type 37 tubes used in the first audio stage. Excuse me. All chassis, chassis with a yellow paint spot on the back of the sub-panel base have this condenser. Well, I can't find the yellow spot paint because it's so dirty and everything and probably since disappeared or faded away. In case of hum is experienced in some of the first models which do not have this condenser, try out some new 37 tubes in the first audio socket if no relief from this service uh, from this source of hum can be obtained connect an 8 microfarad condenser as mentioned above from the first audio cathode to ground so now so it, it's factory and but if you was just looking at the schematic and not reading you may not know for sure is that uh, a repair an old repair or someone just put that in there or what so it's always good to read uh, Sam's uh, schematics this is writers uh, Sam's they usually put when there's changes or anything on the schematic you know by a capacitor like C3 or something they'll put a little circle with a line through it I showed that before and when you go to the parts listing then there'll be a note about that cap or resistor or whatever it is that'll tell you that maybe some models did use it some models use a different value whatever so always don't just look at schematic go through your entire everything you get with your service information now I'm gonna pause again and get things set up here to show you that IF because uh, it's quite um, something that I've been wanting to talk about and happen to have a radio that's got something that's unique to talk about. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. Here's the IF. 
Now, it's a standard IF, and if I um, bring something up here and show it to you on the schematic here, and let me kind of rotate you around. I'll try to be nice about this and not go too fast. It may be at a little angle here because my tripod is. And let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here. And I bring it up. Okay. On the schematic diagram, it happens to be this one here, T4. Do you see there's a capacitor and there's a capacitor going across, going across. Just like any other IF. Low frequency IF, you got a regular just standard tank circuit here, the capacitor and a coil. Okay. Well, you notice they're in these little dotted lines, and you also notice there's no arrows or anything on them because they're non adjustable. But they're there capacitor, 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 and both IFs. Now let's look at, the, look at the IF again. Now we'll be nice, we'll come back nice, and well, I'm going a little too fast, sorry. Right, let's see here. Let's see if we can bring it down. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Now, I bring this up here where you can look at it. Now, we have a solid wood coil form. Yes, there's a little hole in the end. That was just a hole in each end of this. Hey, focus. Okay. That's so that they could put the screw in. They didn't know which end they'd be in, depending on how the coil was wound and how the form was put in. But, uh, otherwise it's solid wood. There is nothing inside here other than wood. Okay. Uh, two coils. Sorry. And, otherwise, we got a terminal strip here. Terminal strip here. Nothing up my sleeve. There's nothing in there. Nothing in there. Nothing in there. Nothing in there. Where's the capacitors? Now, you might say, well, there ain't none. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to show you that you would be wrong. These two leads here. Oh, no, not them two. This one and this one here. Go to the top winding, and then the other two go to the bottom winding. Now, I'm going to set it down here. Again, nothing up my arms. Okay. We have just an LCP, LC meter. Measures capacitance and inductance. We're going to turn it on. It is already zeroed out. And again, I said that these two leads go to the top coil. You see that here, as wires are going up to here. And if we come around here, we see the wires going up to here. Let's see if they got any capacitance. So on capacitance, hopefully you can see that. CX, capacitance, says picofarads. Now I'm going to hook it up. And I'll bring the camera up a little bit right here. Maybe I'll kind of bring that up. And maybe zoom in a little bit. A little more. Focus. There. 453.3 picofarads. Now to remind you, I am hooked across those two wires that go to that top coil. Now, we're going to disconnect from those. Let's see what the other one is. We'll connect here and we'll connect to here. And we'll bring it back up. And hopefully it'll focus. 132.2 picofarads. 
that's actually a pretty decent amount of capacitance. The first one was 450 and the other one 132. So, again, where's these capacitors? Let me zoom out. Ow, 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 ow. There we go. Come on, focus. There we go. Thing's a little slow about focusing, but it does focus. I mean, they're nowhere there. Again, that is solid. I mean, I can take a piece of wire, wire. That's it. As far as it'll go in, bend it over. It's all further it's going in. Just a hole that they drilled. They drilled a hole in each end, and depending on the way they got the form after it was wound, would depend on where they'd put the screw at. It's just there to drive a screw in to hold this bracket that holds it in place. Also hold the bracket that holds the terminal strips. They're just regular terminal strips. <laughs> Now, I'll explain it. <clears throat> and I don't know if I can get this to focus or not. Yeah, maybe. If you notice, there's two wires here on this one. And they're the ones going down the bottom here. But coming out of that coil, which would be right here, there's only one wire. I got two wires going in, one wire coming out. Oh, what's that other wire doing? Well, the other wire is acting, it's just a winding. That's in with the winding on this coil. It's called a gimmick. It's a gimmick capacitor. That's all it is. Gimmick capacitor is just some wires, two wires. They're not connected together. They're insulated from each other and either twisted or wrapped around or something to be brought together in close contact to make up a capacitor. Same thing happens with the top one right here. You can see the two wires here right there. The other side just a one wire coming out. So gimmick again. This top one evidently has got a lot more turns to it than the bottom one, that's why it had larger capacitance. But, as you can see, the only way you're ever going to adjust that, if you wanted to adjust it, is you're going to have to unwind these coils. Because they're interwound in with the, the main coil. So you'd have to unwind this, get that little bit of that, long, that wire that's just going in there as a gimmick, and start shortening it up, wind it all back up again, to check it and see if you got the capacitance right or you got it where you want it well that's going to be nerve wracking so these are factory set they probably will never change uh, there's nothing there as long as the insulation on the wire stays good you know uh, in other words it doesn't burn out because if that insulation goes bad it's going to short the coil out anyway so as long as that insulation stays good that capacitance is not going to change and of course the coil is not going to change because as long as the insulation stays good. So uh, these will stay tuned where the factory set them. But I want to show that because on TVs, a lot of TVs, especially when you get in the, the uh, 40 megahertz, 44 center megahertz uh, range of uh, IF, uh, they actually make use of just the single winding but the uh, capacitance from one wire in the winding to the next wire to the next wire to the next wire because there is capacitance in any coil just what they call inner winding capacitance they make use of that as part of their uh, circuit as far as the resonant circuit goes along with the tube capacitance and electrode capacitance is in the tube and the rest of the circuit capacitance. The wires go in there into that transformer uh, and back to the tube and, and, and the various areas. So everything is made, taken into account. But I wanted to show this to you. 
the other one in there is exactly the same except it sets uh, it sets on top of the oscillator coil down below here would be the oscillator coil and it's mounted above it but uh, and then the uh, antenna coil actually has another one of these capacitors in it that is connecting from the primary to the secondary as a decoupling but uh, so uh, <clears throat> I have no idea how long this video is but anyway this will be something coming up the uh, let me lower it down. You can look at the look closer at the radio. Um, let me back it up. Both controls here, I can tell by just looking at the ends, <laughs> have been replaced. <coughs> Excuse me. A long time ago. Um, they're quite old style, but uh, they have been replaced because they've been cut off on the ends. And uh, let's see if I can bring this thing down. This will probably be kind of a tear down a little bit. Um, there happens to be some rust areas on here different points uh, but she is a copper plated chassis but some of this rust is right out there and open and stuff I'll know more once I clean the chassis off but look forward to this being something in the future there's one other thing I bought when I bought this I want to show you I haven't had one for a long time and I have never had one of these. Uh, but Arcturus tube tests good. They're the nice blue glass, although that was up until 1933-34. After that they they quit making the blue glass. They just stuck with just regular glass. But uh, I've had Arcturus tubes in the past and different equipment. But this one is a 551. It is the very first, Arcturus actually developed this variable mu or remote cutoff tube. Uh, they had to design those uh, for IFs if you wanted AVC. And I've talked about remote cutoff before versus sharp cutoff. But it's also known as variable mu. And I don't know if. If you can see it or not, it's kind of hard to see. There's a little light uh, micro here, U, with an arrow through it. Maybe I turn it like that. That is etched into the glass. That's variable mu. But the 551 was the very first uh, one that came out. Uh, 29 or 30. Uh, I can't exactly, I don't know for sure what exact year it was, but anyway, it's a, um, you know, five pin tube, but it's a, a variable mu tube. So, these these guys, you know, they're tetrode. You got the grid up here, and our grid goes down, you know, one of the pins in the bottom. But it tests good, it tests really strong, so... Um, I don't have anything to use it in, but they had a good price on it. Uh, at the same place I got the radio, so I thought, heck, I'll grab it. Uh, like I said, I've had Arcturus tubes, but they were always in something. Never had one that uh, I didn't need it in anything, so I'll probably just set this thing up and uh, make up a socket for it and set it up somewhere as a display. Anyway, that's about all I got for you. Uh, this will be a future thing down the road. All the, the tuning mechanism is right here. Let me see if I can move it around here. Right here, if I turn the uh, dial. Yeah, it turns a little stiff, but you can see it there. Light bulb goes in here. And this rotates around. 
this is on a, a ring here and down the bottom there's a rubber the rubber's a little stiff so that makes it kind of stiff it's uh, I've lubed it up but anyway so the light falls along as you turn the dial so anyway I think that's about all I've got and uh, we'll talk more about the radio when I get into doing it like I said it'll probably be a pretty good tear down get this chassis cleaned up and everything pull the coils out and everything out um, <clears throat> I should have, I believe I do, in my assortment of pulled capacitors, a capacitor to place that one that was underneath there, it burned up. Uh, so I probably restuffed the caps in this, um, being that otherwise, uh, other than, now this electrolytic was replaced, it should be about this size, but it was replaced a long time ago. I don't know if I got a can this size to fit in there. If I do, it bolts in, I'll use it instead. But look forward to it. It'll be coming up. And uh, so I think that's it. So if you enjoy the video, give a big thumbs up. Uh, thank you for your comments, my new subscribers. And, um, you know, just keep watching. Um, I'm going to go back over a little bit about capacitors again uh, in an upcoming video. Uh, and then we're going to look at the uh, the TVs on hold, the GE. I got some tubes I had to order for it. Uh, so I'm waiting for those to get in here and a couple of other parts. Uh, the little radio that I showed last time, I already kind of delve into it. And I'll, that'll be coming up in the video soon where I'm at on it. And uh, the chassis shined up really nice on it. So I uh, look forward to that. So anyway, until the next time, thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next video.